Travis Wayne Goodsell. In 11 hours, the sign of uh, the prophet Jonas, as Matthew calls it, will occur. And so yes, it'll be in the noon sky, and uh, you guys won't be able to really see it. You'll see the moon. It'll be a full moon. You won't see the stars of what constellation it's in. It's in uh, the goat beast, which is half goat, half whale. That's the sign of Jonas. Full moon in the belly of the whale. Following a uh, The sign with uh, the rising moon and the waxing moon in between Jupiter and Saturn this time, rather than last time when it was supposed to be a full moon, found out after the fact that it was a, an eclipse, lunar eclipse, so it wasn't a legitimate good sign this time it is. So Matthew chapter 12 Then came certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered saying Master <laughs> It's like they're mocking him. We would see a sign from thee. Now they're not talking about a sign in the heavens. They're talking about a miracle. Uh, 38, uh, yeah, just John 6, come on guys. Uh, but he answered and said unto them, notice Jesus is being asked, and Jesus is the one giving an answer, and Jesus is saying the sign of my death will be a sign unto you. Matthew cannot get his book straight. <laughs> like I said, it's tomorrow at noon. 23 hours from now. <laughs> An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a miracle and there shall be no miracle given to it. But the sign in the heaven of the prophet Jonas. Recognize the difference now. It's okay to see the signs in the heavens. Joseph Smith, in the Doctrine and Covenants, says we as Mormons, when we're baptized, are required to look for the signs. He tells us why. The sign of the prophet Jonas. Which means that the book of Jonas is not an actual story, a history. It's fiction designed as prophecy. So there was no John, because that's what Jonas is. It's the Greek form of John. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, Capricorn, so shall the Son of Man. Is he talking in third person? <laughs> no, he's not talking about him, per se. Again, Matthew also by not understanding anything about which he is claiming to write as the author calling himself, a.k.a. Matthew, because it's not even Matthew who was writing this book of Matthew. He gets everything messed up as he thinks he's trying to convert Jews to Christianity. Jews know better. And 
Jesus, Paul, uh, the Son of Man is the latter-day Christ, the latter-day Messiah, a mortal man. Even Joseph Smith said that's who it is. And so, the part here in verse 40 is uh, Matthew screwing up the prophecy. He's not understanding it. Because the sign is not for three days and three nights. Because he, he says, For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, which was in the story, but think about it. Do you see the day when you're in the belly? No. You have three days of darkness. Book of Mormon talks about three days of darkness for the latter days. Solar eclipses. Three solar eclipses. And they don't happen three days in a row. <laughs> they are spread out over a period of seven years. The first one was 21st of August 2017. The second one we just had last month, or two months ago, June 21st, Father's Day. It was over the whole old world this time. The third one, seven years from the first, on 8 April 2024, three days of darkness. That's what's being symbolized in the prophecy of the book of John, Jonas. And so the Son of Man is not going to be in the heart of the earth. He's not going to be murdered three days and three nights. No. What he's referring to is the sign of the full moon in the belly of Capricorn at noon. Because when the sun is at noon, the Egyptians call that sun the god Amun. Mormons should recognize that as the name of their god. Adam on Diamond. There's two other Doctrine and Covenants passages that talk about Sun Amun. <coughs> so if you have a son, you have a father named Amun. And so Sun Amun was understood in Egyptian as the Pharaoh, a mortal man, elevated to the ranks of deity by his anointing. He is washed as a high priest. He is anointed as a Christ king. If Mormons understood that, we could explain things better to those we go and proselyte to as they get upset that we would dare call ourselves gods or embryos of God has nothing to do with that. Because in their mind, they're thinking supernatural being. Not supernatural being. It's mortal man. <clears throat> but what is interesting is that he continues. He says, the men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment. So he's going on and claiming that Nineveh is a sim symbol for the wicked religion that is converted to the words of Jonah when he went back to preach to him. The men, 
in, of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation. There's going to be a judgment and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of John. And behold, a greater than John is here. See, Matthew thinks he already came. The sign did not come in his day. Just like the sign of his birth did not happen in his day. John screw, or Matthew screwed up here. But when you put it in the context of correcting Matthew to say, oh, latter days, we've got to correct him on this. We've got to think latter days. So the latter day people who are converted, how many are there of you Mormons? <laughs> but again, shall rise in judgment. And condemn. Now let's go back to Moses. What did he do? He petitioned the Pharaoh for a redress of grievances. Pharaoh kept saying no until finally Pharaoh said yes. And what was it that caused him to say yes? The death of the firstborn birthright blessing son of Pharaoh, the heir to the throne. Succession was over. The reign of the David Moses dynasty had ended. And Moses restored it. Thus, Joseph Smith says a man like Moses from the Mormon church shall lead the Mormons like Moses during the Exodus. <coughs> so there is a judgment. And if you go to the Egyptian records from which it originated, Amun-Ra is the judge, the son at Dunday. And he had been siding with Set for most of the competition until Horus was able to show that he was the rightful heir because he came from Set, the branch. And so the judge sided with Horus and the kingdom was restored and Set was banished. Judgment. See, the men of Nineveh didn't rise in judgment against anybody. They were just converted. And John was was shamed for not having listened in the first place. And so Matthew is now understanding something correctly, sort of. And then there's something about the Queen of the South shall rise up in, in the judgment with this generation. And I'm not quite sure about that. find a sign for that. So I'm not quite sure. But uh, again, they're comparing Solomon to the latter-day Messiah. Thus Solomon and Queen Sheba as Beth Sheba as the house of Sheba thus the queen of Sheba 
that's the Queen of the South. She is the Queen of the South who came to visit Solomon. <laughs> but the actual story of Solomon and David are fiction. Taking from a historical context, just like Nineveh was a real place in Assyria. But the story was fiction because it's designed as a prophecy. Same with David and Solomon. This is why the Jews, having been digging since they occupied the land, can't find evidence of King David and King Solomon in the temple, at the temple, around the temple, through the temple, by the temple, next to the temple, on top of, below, nothing. But as I already told you, the 18th dynasty was the David Moses dynasty. That's where the Jews need to look. But they're looking beyond the mark. So, let's go over the baptismal covenant with you. I think it's Doctrine and Covenants 39, but let's confirm. I'm do the Z rather than the S. Section 39, verse 23. And that shall come to pass on as many as you shall baptize with water, and you shall lay your hands, and they shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, and shall be looking forth for the signs of my coming. The sign of Jonah is one of those signs, isn't it? How many of you have been looking for the sign of Jonah in accordance with your baptismal covenant? Oh, Mr. Carter! I missed that show. I haven't seen it forever. But here's the key. The reason why we look for the signs in the heavens is so that you can know Him. And if you're thinking of Jesus as a resurrected being who failed to fulfill prophecy according to Matthew's revisionist history you're looking for the wrong guy you're not going to know him remember the parable of the ten virgins the virgins who did not produce fruit from the revelations that they got in their head and you're thinking what? What is oil for the lamps? It's olive oil. That's the law of Moses' commandment that you're supposed to use olive oil. So, is Matthew going to violate the law of Moses to convince the Jews? No! So the lamps and the oil, the olive oil. How do you get olive oil? You have to have an olive seed. You have to plant it. it. Takes a while to grow. And then once you have the olives, you have to press them. The olive press. Claire Ryan sings an adorably beautiful song, Gethsemane. Olive press. If you're looking for the signs, you'll have to understand also how to interpret them. You can't just go, oh, that looks like a sign, that's going to be it. And you can't say, well, you'll see, there's lots of different signs, I'm going to choose that sign to be that sign. 
doesn't work that way either. You have to understand the ancient understanding of how they wrote the prophecies. That's how I am able to tell you. Yeah, tomorrow, noon. So Bruce R. McConkie was sure as he tried to, or as he was able to fool Mormons, that uh, I will know no better than that I know now. <laughs> he has no clue. He lied. He bore false witness. And yes, he's made many errors too in the scriptures, footnoting and chapter headings. But we were not allowed to correct any of his work. Yeah, you have to know. And so Samuel the Lamanite comes to the Mormons in Salt Lake City. Where do you think it was going? It's a prophecy, also, guys. It's not an actual history. They plagiarized. Oh, oh no, it can't be plagiarism because that means it's not true. What do you mean it doesn't make it true? What about the Bible? I just went over it with you. Book of John, Jonah. It's prophecy. Book of Mormon's prophecy. Remember? The stories about the first coming are a parallel, thus prophecy. They go hand in hand. Types and shadows. Hand in hand. Prophecy. And you get mad at me? For telling you what you should have known already, but you don't know because you don't have oil in your lamps. You have not produced the works from your faith in the Word. You've instead let the Word die because you've done nothing with your faith. Faith without works is dead. So don't come complaining to me about your inability to be obedient to the revelation you claim you get. So, I'll post the picture at the beginning. Whether the actual judgment happens tomorrow, around noon, won't know until it happens. Like I said, three days of darkness is a period of seven years. <coughs> so whether this happens on the day of the sign, or whether it's a plus or minus month, won't know until the event on earth actually happens. you'll know when the event happens. And I'll let you know if you don't catch it. Because <laughs> I'll know. I'm the first one to know. And if you don't understand, that's why. <laughs>